Hey, hey, hey. It is Friday. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi, hi, hi. So, okay, it's Friday, so it's time for Camp with Conversations. Um, Y'all know me. I'm going to get started because this is going to be posted anyway. It'll go up, up top as a pin post for the week, and it'll stay there um, because um, all the Camper Conversations we do are pinned at the top. And the reason I do that is because I literally get people viewing the videos because you may be busy getting off work or whatever, but I literally get people viewing the videos after the fact. Um, and then I get some inboxes or I'll get some comments on there or someone will respond with a like or a love or whatever. And um, literally, guys, there are usually about 90 to 100 views of the videos after. So I think that's great. I think that's a positive. Even though you guys aren't on live when I'm on all the time, you're still watching the videos. So we're still sharing with one another. So... I'm going to get started um, because, again, it's going to be posted. So let me go and start out with every what I say all the time every week. I am not a relationship expert. I am not, I am not, I am not. I am a black woman in this world, living this life, doing the damn thing, and having a good time doing it. That is who I am. I come to you guys every week because I love growth, I love sharing, I love caring. And I think in this group, we can do that. We can help one another. So this group is about, and it's for, um, adults who are single, dating, courting, or married. It's a real-life relationship growth group. Because we deal in a real world, we live in a real world, and we deal with real-life situations, right? All right. So, um, the topic today, guys, the topic today, literally, again, topics come from discussions and things that are posted on the page during the week or over, over some time. That's where the topics come from. And oh, let me mention this. Let me say this. I am not in the camper today. I'm in my truck. And I'm in my truck because I'm on auntie duty. Um, my nephew plays football and he had a called football practice um, for today for about an hour and a half. So I'm like, I'm out at the field, um, there in the back, on the field, and they're practicing. So I'm like, I'm not going to run back over to the daycare just to do this. I'll be here and do it. So I'm in my truck. I'm not in my camper. So either way, welcome. So, hey, we're going to get started. So the topic, the topic, the topic, let me go here the topic today comes from a post i literally made about two hours ago it's about two hours ago i saw it somewhere else on another page the scenario and i thought it was great but it says and we're not going to take the whole um post there's just a portion of it we're going to take we're going to take um the put we're going to take a portion of it because it definitely helps. So, the topic, the subject of our camper conversation today is your sexual health. Your sexual health. Again, not a doctor, not a relationship expert, none of those things. I'm just coming from a point of experience, my own experience, and I would love for you guys to share your experience. Because my experience, coupled with your experience, can help someone without experience. Or give us all new experiences. Oh, I just came up with that. <laughs> all right. So, um, I posted about two hours ago. It says scenario. Not, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You've been with your spouse for 28 years, married for 18. She is no longer in love. You have not had sex in over three years because she is no longer interested. Neither person is sleeping with anyone else. You have not, you've been with your spouse for 28 years, married for 18. Sex, someone is at my front door, y'all. Okay, it's probably my daughter. Um, you have not had sex in over three years because she's no longer interested. But neither of you, neither of the people are sleeping with someone else. 
Hey, sis. My sister is on, guys. That's my number one supporter. I appreciate her. Um, haven't had sex for three years. All right. So let me start here. So today, you all, I went and had a physical. Um, I went to Jamaica several weeks ago. Most of y'all know that. I went to Jamaica several weeks ago, one of my summer trips. And when I was there, I literally um, thought I had an allergic reaction to something. I was itching, itching, itching. And my brother-in-law is a healthcare professional. So I called my sister. I was like, hey, I need to talk to Paul. Like, what does he think? So we were thinking maybe it was the sunscreen that I used. Ended up having to take Benadryl every day. It didn't dampen and kill my trip, thankfully. But it did bother me, right? So I get back. And I'm like, okay, it could have been something I ate or whatever. So I get back having the same issue, literally to the point waking me up at night while I'm itching, my skin's irritated, y'all. Um, so I made a doctor's appointment because I'm like, I got to get something checked out. I had a friend. Um, he He's a lab technician, uh, phlebotomist, all of that, whatever, for over 20 years. And he was like, hey, your blood work is going to tell some things. So I went to the doctor. Got my blood work done. Um, she was checking my liver, my kidneys, all of that good stuff. Because based on some things that were going on, she was saying that um, it could be issues with my kidneys. Um, so I was like, man. So that appointment, which ended up going very well, um, blood work came back great, guys. Came back good. Um, that appointment led her to ask me, when's the last time you had a physical? And usually, you know, we do physicals when you're going for a job or a sport or whatever, whatever physicals come about. You really don't always think about, let me get a physical. So I was like, man, I can't remember the last time I had a physical. So we scheduled my physical. We scheduled it for today. We scheduled it for today, the 17th. So I went today, this morning, and um, I had a physical. EKG, you know, checked everything out, my breathing, heart, all of that stuff, checked it out, right? So when I came out, I actually posted a video earlier in here about it. And I said to you guys, kind of paraphrasing, like, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure, you know, we make time for everything else. We have to make time for our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health. So take the time to make sure that you are good. Check, um, get checkups. Ladies, have your pap smears, um, your mammograms, get the twins checked out, make sure they're good. Brothers, go and do that, <coughs> go and cough, um, go and do that prostate exam. Um, it's uncomfortable. We don't like to do it because, man, when that machine squish your ladies, that mammogram, it, it squeezes. But it's a short point of un being uncomfortable, a short time of being uncomfortable for a long-term goal. So, so crucial and important to take care of yourself health-wise, mentally, emotionally. So, let me say this. I was in a relationship previously. I was in a marriage. You guys already know that. This page pretty much stemmed from that. I was in a marriage, and I found myself becoming misically, misically, sorry, mentally and emotionally unhealthy. Mentally and emotionally unhealthy. Because people play a big part in your health, whether you think it or know it or not, especially your mental and your emotional. Of course they do, because we live with people, we deal with people. And your spouse, if you're dealing with a spouse that um, is killing you in some type of way, your mental, your emotion, your physical, it just, it just plays a part on everything. And I found myself in a place, y'all, where I was mentally and emotionally not well. I, w I felt myself getting sick. I felt myself not wanting to do certain things. I felt myself not wanting to respond and do the things that I normally want to do. Um... I felt myself not wanting to be at the house. I felt myself not wanting to um, be intimate. And if anybody knows me on a personal level, y'all know that is, for me, that's crazy. 
And I'm going to say that's crazy. It, it's, it's, it's crazy for me not to want to do that and be that way. Um, because I have a very high and very strong sexual drive. I, I do. My mother was very open with us about sexuality and things of that nature. And that may have played a part, but it was important for us to understand our bodies and, and learn what we liked and what we didn't like. My sister can attest to that. That's my sister Claudette, y'all. So she can attest to that. So, you know, being sexual wasn't something that was shunned. It wasn't a, you don't talk about that thing in our house. Sexual openness was there. So we could tell our mother and, you know, go and talk to her. Um, and even our father in some aspects, um, you know, how we're feeling. You know, I gave the example last week, I think, how my mom taught my brothers how to put a condom on with a lamp. Um, she took the lamp top off and, you know, showed them how to put the condom on with a lamp. But um, the important thing that I realized was I have to get back mentally and physically and emotionally healthy. That is necessary. So in this comment, in this post, uh, it pretty much ended with, what advice would you give this couple? What advice would you give to someone who's going through this when there's a separation going on, there's been no sex, it's almost like a loveless marriage? So that led me to talk about having my physical this morning and dealing with physical health, um, dealing with health as a whole. It led me to having this discussion of topic, which my sister helped me kind of come up with, um, Let's talk about our sexual health, y'all. Let's talk about the importance of knowing your body, keeping yourself healthy, and, and understanding it's not going to be good all the time. But when you're with your spouse and when you're with your significant other, um, you know and understand just because the sex waves sometimes doesn't mean it takes away from the whole relationship as a whole. But if we're not taking care of ourselves sexually, um, if we're not taking care of ourselves health-wise, our sexual health, um, it can take a toll and play a part on the division and breakup in our household, in our relationships. Because I don't care what you say, who says it, and how you say it. Sex is pivotal in a relationship. Sex is pivotal in a marriage. Sex is so important. Is so important because men are physical like we've heard that all our lives I'm sure and if you didn't hear it you didn't know it I'm telling you now men are physical they're visual they're visual men are visual like they see it they want it they can taste it they 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 go for it men are visual women are more emotional women need more to have that connection to have that feeling of belonging, to have that feeling, that sense of security, that, that, that hope for something more. We're built different than men. We're built in a different manner than men are. God knew what he was doing. He, he, he created the two, and he created them the way he did for a purpose. Sex is just not for reproduction and having babies. If you've been taught that all your life, I am so sorry. Sex was not created for two just to have babies. If that was the case, a lot of us would be pregnant 24-7 all the time, popping out babies. Pop one out, here come another. Pop one out, here come another. Pop one out, here come another. So that is not what, it has, what it's about. It's not about just producing and having babies. Sex is a pleasurable thing between two people that love each other, respect each other, and understand each other. Now, I'm not going to lie. I am an advocate for marriage and sex within a marriage. I'm an advocate for that. Have I always done it in my life? No, I have not. But if in a, in a perfect situation, that would be my preference, okay? That would mean my preference. So, to keep myself healthy physically is so important it's so important let me uh let me i, I don't want to miss anybody's comment so let me read because my sister has a pivotal point in this conversation 
All right. She said, my husband has been a vegetarian for 50 years, took care of his mental health and spiritual healing as a young man, and it prepared him for a wife 22 years younger than him. 22 years younger than him. Yes, guys, my sister is 22 years younger than her husband. 22 years younger than her husband. Um, my husband and I are 75 and 52 and still get down. <laughs> and still get down. So, understand and, and, and get the point that she made before she said that. He took care of his physical health, his mental health, and his spiritual health. And it prepared him for a wife 22 years younger than him. It prepared him. Because I know my sister, if I know my sister, and I don't know my sister, her sex drive, just off the chain is mine. It's just off the scale is mine. I, if I know anything about my sister, and I know my sister, her drive is just as high as mine. So by him taking care of himself, by him making sure he was healthy, um, by him making sure, hey, <laughs> By him making sure he was healthy, it, it prepared him for something he didn't even know and realize he was being prepared for, to be honest. But I'm sure he didn't do those things to take care of his things because he said, one day I may have uh, a young hottie. I'm sure he didn't think that. I'm sure his thoughts were, it's important for me to make sure I'm healthy. It's important for me to make sure that I'm good mentally, that I'm good emotionally. Counseling, y'all, let me put my plug in because, of course, y'all know I'm an advocate for it. Counseling is the best thing, gift you can do for yourself. Counseling is the best mental health exercise that you can do, the best workout that you can do for your mental and your emotional. Because there are some things that come out in counseling that don't come out when you're talking to your girlfriends or don't come out when you're talking to your boys or don't come out when you're talking to your spouse or whatever, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, because um, there are some areas of embarrassment that we have and we don't want to share with people. We don't want to tell them how our failures are and how we were molested as, as we were younger, when we were younger or we were physically abused when we was younger in some other way or um, you know, our trust issues are, are way high. You know, we don't want to tell people that. <clears throat> we don't want to tell people that. I know you are, sis. <laughs> we don't want to tell people that. So counseling, to get counseling is the best health, I feel like, the best health option you can take for yourself. Because when you deal with your mental, it helps you to hone in and focus in on your emotional and it helps you to hone in and focus on your physical. Because y'all know you can make yourself physically sick, right? You can make yourself physically sick by worrying. You can make yourself physically sick by arguing and just being uh, tight all the time. You can make yourself physically sick. So why not make a healthy, happy mind to be a healthy, happy heart? So... When we talk about getting your mammograms, ladies, when we talk about getting your pap smears, um, checking for STDs, getting tested for HIV as much and often as you think you should because you know what your sexual history was. You know how many times and how many people you was getting down with, whether you were safe all the time or you weren't. We are not perfect. I'm never, ever going to say that I was always safe. Never going to say that. Um, now let me do say this. I've always been with a man that I've had an emotional attachment to. We ain't just doing to this willy, willy, willy guy. We ain't doing just anybody. That ain't happening. So because the connection was there, sometimes we didn't always use condoms. Sometimes we weren't always safe. Um, like we've been taught and it's said and we're told to do. Cause sometimes in the moment you get caught up. Then you think about that thing, and you're like, oh, I'm going to need you to wrap that up. Or he think about that thing, and he's like, oh, let me wrap this up. Because STDs, having babies, you know, that's not the least of our worries. 
when we're having unprotected sex. Um, STDs, things that will affect you for the rest of your life are things that we have to think and worry about. Um, so when, when, when you, when you're going ladies and you're getting your pap smear and they're doing all these things and they're checking, um, be honest and open with your doctor. If, if you're not honest and open with anybody, you should be honest and open with your doctor. Cause guess what? They gonna see it whether you tell them or not. <laughs> They're going to see it. Your blood work is going to show it. Your pap is going to show it. Your discharge is going to show it. Your smell is going to show it. All of those things play a part in your sexual health like they do. And you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you do get in a relationship and you are with somebody. And then you worrying about odor and you worrying about discharge and you worrying about stuff that ain't healthy. Because we should have some healthy discharge. There should be some healthy discharge. Um, but you gotta you gotta keep you gotta keep the girl healthy. You gotta keep her right. You gotta keep her smelling good. You gotta keep her you gotta keep her on the up and up, right? Because let's be honest and let's be real. Cause we real grown folks and we grown folks talking. Even if you handle yourself, y'all, I bought a rose. Man, that thing is off the chain. So, even if you're handling yourself, you want to be healthy. You want to have good vaginal health. So, talk to your doctor about what good vaginal health is. I am 49, y'all, and I still have questions. Like, okay, what's supposed to be this? And how is that supposed to be that? And is this okay? And is that okay? So, that's what your doctor is for. Talk about it. Uh, get your pap smears. Make that happen yearly. And some people may need to do it more often. That depends on what your doctor told you and what happened with you previously. Um, it may need to be more often. So make sure you get that done. Get your mammogram. Get your mammogram. Breast cancer is the number one leading cancer. If I'm correct, if I can remember correctly, I'm understanding. It's the one that takes us out. Y'all do know men can get breast cancer as well, right? Did y'all know that? Go check it out. Look it up, read it, and check it out. Men can get breast cancer as well. But of course, it's more prevalent in women. We hear about it. We see about it more in women. Get your breast checked. Like, when you in the shower, like, I used to have this thing that hung up in the shower. Um, and it shows you how to do a self-breast exam. So if you feel something that doesn't feel right, if you know, if something doesn't feel right, it can alert you to go see a doctor and let them do a proper test, a thorough test to let you know, um, you know, what may or may not be wrong. And some of us are scared. Some people are scared to know. But please understand, if you don't find out and you don't know, it's going to lead to something worse in the long run. So take care of yourself. Take care of your body. Men, brothers, understand, prostate cancer is common, especially in the black men. Yeah. Yeah, so Paul said men can get breast cancer. It's rare, however. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's more prevalent in women. You hear about it. Of course, a big percentage in women. But it's rare in men. But it can happen. Um, Men... Prostate cancer, like, it is heavy in the black community. A lot of these diseases are heavier in our community, and that, that's just based on poverty and lack of. A lot of that is based on poverty and lack of. Okay, so anyway, brothers, go to the doctor, do that cough, cough, test, test thing y'all do, and let him check them balls out. Make sure they good and they ready and they, they doing what they need to do, especially you all that are still... Um, producing and want to have children like you want to make sure you know it's healthy you want to make sure it's healthy um so go and get your you know get your stuff checked out get your get your penis checked out get you get you know, make sure the prostate is, is not huge and enlarged and and you know um not doing and, and doing what it's supposed to do in the body what is built and made to do get your prostate checked out because you all, if we don't do these things, it leads our mate 
to suffer. If you don't take care of yourself physically, it leaves your mate to suffer. So let's talk about our responsibility to our mates. Let's do that. Because if I say I love you, and I say I do, or I say I'm committed to this relationship, and I'm committed to you, then that means me taking care of myself is just as important. It's just as important. Me taking care of myself for you is just as important. So, men... I know y'all don't like to go to the doctor. It's macho thing, I guess, or whatever. But if you're not taking care of yourself, your health, you are leaving your children, your significant other, your spouse, you're leaving their lives up to chance. Period. You're leaving their lives up to chance. Because if you don't get checked out and something happens, or you pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off, and all of a sudden... Either you in the hospital, um, you can't go to work, you can't perform, you can't do whatever it is that a father um, needs to do and a spouse needs to do, a significant other needs to do. You're leaving them out there to fend for themselves. You're leaving them out there to fend for themselves. So it's not fair. It's not fair to not take care of yourself for your mate. It's not fair to not to do that. Ladies, same thing. Ladies, same thing. So, and my sister said, be honest about what you don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. I am the poster child of getting information. If I don't know, I didn't get this far. My business has not grown to this extent for me to sit around and be like, mm, I don't want to ask. Or I might look dumb. Or I might look stupid. Or... They're going to say something. Hi, I'm dummy. Until I'm not. Because <laughs> I'm going to use my resources and I'm going to find out. So if you don't know, be honest and ask and find out. Right? So in this process of being healthy, being sexually healthy, because that's what we're talking about. In this process of being sexually healthy, y'all. You have to know your significant other. You have to know your partner. You have to know what things hurt. You have to know what things feel okay. You have to know what things are uncomfortable. And that's your personal preference. That's your personal preference. Um, ooh, we about to get sensitive on this one. So... And this is your personal preference. That's between you and yours. Anal, that's between you and yours. Hey, Marshawn, that's between you and yours. Um, brothers, a lot of y'all be like, oh, don't go back there. Don't touch that. Don't what? I'm going to leave that right there. Because that is, that is your preference. If you want your lady... Because, y'all, do y'all not realize that there's an erogenous zone between your anus and your testicles? There's an erogenous zone. So, if it feels good to you, why are you running from it? Like, does that mean you gay? And if you are gay, that's your choice in life. You are gay. I'm not knocking anybody for their sexual preference. But what I'm saying is men tend to shy away from that because their egos and they think they're like, uh-uh, you ain't doing that and you ain't doing this. And man, please, girls, ladies, let me tell you something. Y'all hit that right spot in between there and there. I'm not saying you got to go up in there. That's on you. But what I'm saying, there's an erogenous zone. Hey, there is one. And the body is made the way it's made. There is one. The body is made the way the body is made. Whether you want it to be touched or you don't, just know there is a pleasure principle <laughs> between your balls and your anus. You might like it, you might not. 
it, it, in your head, it might not work for you. So you may not be able to get that. But again, that's between you and your significant other, what y'all want to try. Ladies, I saw a meme the other day. It was hilarious. I wanted to post it. The only time a male wants you to think his penis ain't the biggest is when he want to go anal. <laughs> I hollered on that one. That was hilarious to me. The only time a brother wants you to think his penis is not that big is when he want to go anal. <laughs> it ain't that big. Just go slow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That is funny to me. My sister said, oh, my shine said, Know that anatomy. That's right. Know your anatomy. Know it. Pick up a book. Read it. And you got to pick up a book nowadays. Ask Google. Ask Siri. Siri. Oh, I might speak it. I might get it started. Let, let me not speak it because I call Siri. Siri my answer. But ask. Know the anatomy. There are plenty of books and diagrams or whatever, whatever, and conversations to be had and information out there that tells you where those erogenous zones are. Ladies, if you want to turn him out, psh. brothers, if you want to turn her out, learn those spots and those zones that are made for pleasure points. They are made for pleasure points. Some pleasure points for women are their breast. Um, some are their breasts. Some women, you know, their breasts are really sensitive. And they don't want you touching it or, or or their nipples or whatever. And they don't want you touching it. Understand that. Understand that. Understand if her nipples and playing with her breasts will send her into a different state. Do you know you can go, you can orgasm from your breasts? If they touched right and they're tantalized right. Is that a tantalized? I don't know that went in the right spot. But... You can have an orgasm that way. Y'all, I promise you, y'all don't know y'all body. Y'all ain't knowing y'all. Y'all better get with it. Listen, because the pleasure principle, why not enjoy yourself sexually? You're not trying to make babies. You're not sitting here. You're not here to, to reproduce and say, hey, I mean, if you are, you are. And you still can have fun in the process doing it. But if you're not, the times you lay down with your man or the times you lay down with your lady, why not explore each other to the extreme of comfort? To the extreme of comfort. And that comes to my sister's comment. She was like, have, make sure you have safe words. Have a safe word. What, uh, who said, uh, what, what's his name to say? Pineapples? <laughs> the safe word is pineapples? No, that's real. That's real for real for real for real. Have a safe word, because if the brother is is, is doing something, or um, or the sister is doing something, and you don't feel comfortable with it, or it's hurting, or whatever, use your safe word. Use your safe word. That way, you know you're not timid with it. Somebody, you don't get timid and you shy away from it because it's like, oh, I don't want to do that because, you know, that mental, emotional physical health y'all mental emotional physical health know the anatomy Marshawn made a great point know the anatomy know your anatomy know your body know what this does and that does and this does and what you do what y'all do together is y'all business there's no right or wrong way the right or wrong way begins and stops with you it begins and stops with you. You know, some people might like anal. Sorry. Had some popcorn earlier, y'all. Some people might like anal. And some people may not. But if you're trusted with a trusted, loving partner, y'all can explore those things if you want to. Marshawn said, don't be afraid to explore your own body and learn what feels good to you. Then vocalize that. Girl, if that is not right, Brothers, if you can't tell your lady that you love oral sex, you love when she gives you head, 
If you can't tell your lady that, there's a problem. If you can't tell her how you like it, let me tell y'all the fun part. The fun part is in the doing. The fun part is in the doing. So you you learning each other's bodies. You you feeling on each other. You doing things. You want it fast. You want it slow. You want it deep. You want it shallow. You want. You have to have these conversations, and you have to know that's that is a part of sexual health. Yes, you have to know what your significant other likes and appreciates from you. You have to know that because it it brings out so much more in your sexual experiences and it excites you to be like, "Ooh, I can't wait till next time to see what 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 we going to do. What we going to do. How we going to do it." So, fellas, if you like oral sex, if you love head, if you want your lady to give you oral, y'all have to decide and determine how, when, and if. But if you don't talk to her about it, if you don't tell her, because I hear, I've heard from a lot of men say in, in certain discussions in certain, um, in certain places um, that they don't even ask because they know they're going to get turned down. Talk to your lady. Talk to her. Maybe she had a bad experience. Maybe she was taught that that was nasty. Maybe she was taught, maybe she just don't know how to do it. Maybe she feels embarrassed or shy that she can't quite do it right. So, But if y'all do it together, if y'all do it together, and you're like, ooh, ooh, girl, teeth. <laughs> My sister said, let me tell you, you never stop exploring. Never stop exploring. You don't. Like, if every time you lay down with your baby, your boo, your thing, your your boo thing, your your whatever, if you don't feel like it's a, you, if you don't feel like Dora, damn it, there's something wrong. <laughs> something wrong. Be Dora. Dora the damn explorer. Dora, 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 the explore, explore, <laughs> explore one another, find the map, like the map, oh, Dora in the map, the map, <laughs> Dora in the map, man, Dora has something, okay, that's children, we can't relate the two, they don't even go together, stop, but what I'm saying, explore one another, find out what he likes, ladies, we're going to talk to the ladies. This is for you, brothers. Hold on, okay? Ladies, I'm talking to the ladies. I'm talking to the ladies. <sighs> Lay your dude out. Lay your man out. Like, tell him you can't do anything. I just want you to lay here. Don't do anything. Don't respond. Like, don't feel like you have to reciprocate. Like, give him a day, right? Lay him out. And just explore and touch all areas of his body. And watch his response. Watch what he likes and watch what he doesn't like. And you got to know him. So, some, some lovers are quiet. Some people are quiet. Some people are vocal. And some people are just kind of monotone and low with it. But lay him out. Lay him out. Start. From the bottom, his toes, his feet, start from the bottom and work your way up. Work your way all the way up. That's your man. Why Why can't you do that? That's your man. We talking about your man. All right? We ain't talking about, I hooked up with this person. That's your business. But listen to what I'm saying. Your man. The one that wants you to please him, the one, the one that wants and needs you to be happy with him, to be proud of him, to care for him, the one that needs you to trust him, your man, start from the bottom, his toes, use feathers, 
use fruit, use whatever. Explore, explore, and find out what he likes, what he enjoys. Because it may be something off the wall or something unexpected. And girl, you done made your job easier. Now, when I say job, you know I'm not saying it's a job, it's a chore. It should not be a job or a chore. If you feel like it's a job or a chore, y'all ain't being Dora. Y'all not exploring with the goal of pleasing one another. Mental, emotional, physical health. Honey, whipped cream, chocolate. Yes, ma'am. Whatever works. My sister, that's my dog right there. Claudette, Claudette, Claudette. That's what... <laughs> Whatever it is that you're going to use to do that exploratory thing with your man, do that. Do that. Find out what he likes, what he enjoys. That is your job. Okay? That was for the ladies. Brothers. Brothers. I made a post um, earlier this week um, giving a shout out to the brothers of this group. Yo, we have so many brothers taking part in discussions. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really blown away, to be honest. Because a lot of times, it's the women that respond. It's the women that are the um, more prevalent one in groups like this when we're talking about relationships. But I have a specific set of brothers, it seems like, a, a crew of brothers that come here and they make comments. And we have our things back and forth. And, and and no love lost because they're coming from a male perspective. And ladies, we need that. So brothers, once again, thank you. Thank, can, I can never do this right. There it is. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. So brothers, 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 let me talk to y'all now, brothers. Because the ladies, and I know it, 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 a lot of the times the the woman is catered to. I get that because we go into our levels of masculine and lead and this and this and that. And the man initiates in the uh, girl, you better initiate. Sorry. The man initiates and the man is the one that takes the lead in so many areas. But take, take brothers, take the lead, like lay her out, preferably on her stomach. I'm sorry. Lay her out. <laughs> Lay her out and start from the bottom and work your way up. There are erogenous zones all over the body, y'all. They're, they're all over the body. Let's not just think. Let's think out the box. Okay, so we know the breast, the chest. The vagina, the penis, the behind. You know, those are like obvious, you know, the common. Because those are the areas that, you know, the mouth. We know areas, you know, whatever. But there may be some points on your lady, some places on her body that you did not know would send her over, that would set her off. There are some spots and some places that will send her over. And set her off. And the only way you're going to know this is say, let her come home and be like, babe, you know you had a long day. Go get you a shower. Got things taken care of. And when you get out the shower, I just want you to go lay in the bed. Just don't put nothing on. I just want you to go and I just want you to lay there. Let her go do all of that. She lay there and come in. Whatever you using. Feathers, fruit, whatever you're using. Um, and start from the bottom and work your way all the way up. Learn her body. Understand the zones and the parts and, and the places that get her there. And then there are times when y'all not even going to have intercourse itself. I, I wasn't going to say the whip, sis, but you know what? Since you brought it up, since you brought it up, <laughs> the whip, the whip, the 
for, for, for those of y'all that's into that kind of thing, hey, sometimes pain is gain for people. Have your safe word. Have your safe word. Learning your... Learning each other. Having a good sexual health. Knowing your body. Knowing yourself. Your mental. Your emotional. And your physical. All of that. But lay her out, brothers. Lay her out and go from the bottom to the top. And see what she likes. And see what she doesn't like. And as y'all do that, while y'all doing it, man, man. The things that can take place. The adventures you can have in wherever you choose to be. Your bedroom, your backyard, your kitchen, your living room. Like, wherever you choose to be with your significant other, with your spouse. Do those things. Keep yourself healthy. Your mind healthy. Your heart healthy. Your emotions. Your physical healthy. Like, all of these things tie in together. I'm so, so glad I got my physical today. I'm so glad that that situation led me to going to the doctor and the doctor saying, hey, have you gotten a physical? When's the last time you had one? And then reminding me that you need to schedule your pap smear and you need to schedule your mammogram because that brother, that special man, in my life that comes to the point of a commitment and possibly even to the point of marriage, however God leads, I want to be healthy for him. I want to be mentally, emotionally, and physically healthy for him. Because, brother, let me tell you, Lord knows, Lord, you know what you need to do. Because sister's going to keep you Popping, 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 popping. It is what it is, y'all. I'm about to call her back. It is what it is. So keep yourself mentally healthy. Go to counseling. Find out why you have so many insecurities. Find out why you have trust issues. And hit it head on. Attack it. Hit it. Fix it. Get it right. Because for yourself first... You, the, the overthinking, the lack of trust, just because he looked like this or she looked like that one, or or it will it will break you down. And you, I mean, how are you gonna enjoy the pleasures of life, girl? She said a swing, girl. If you don't stop, sis. If you don't enjoy, if you want to enjoy the pleasures of life, if you you know doing all these things, and you enjoying life, <laughs> I love this girl. Why shouldn't your mental be a part of that? Like, focusing in, honing in. So, over the summer, y'all, I made a commitment to myself. I'm going to enjoy and travel things that I could not do previously. I, I, I did those things. I went to visit friends. I went to see some of my male friends, some of the people that I, I, I were not connected to because I was in a marital relationship. That's just how I think, and that's just how I do. And they understood and they respected that. But now that I was free, <laughs> I was able to enjoy the fullness. I did my counseling. I started pole dancing, which was a physical workout for me. Which, which brought out another level of confidence in me. Yo, ladies, get on a pole. Get on a pole. Woo! Yes, I was free now. Get on a pole. Like, that pole will tone your body. I don't care what size you are. I don't care. One of my instructors, y'all, and I love her, love her to death, and this is no secret, she is a big girl. She is a big woman. And she is so, I mean, she's smooth with it, y'all. She, you know, the chair and the floor. And, and I'm not good with that part of it. Like, I could work the pole. I could climb the pole and swing and, you know, get better at that. But, you know, I'm I'm still working on the, the, the charisma be cranking up. Because she'd be like, why, why are you walking like that? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm trying, damn it. But, you know, it comes out when it wants to. Yo, my shine, I'm telling you, try it. Like, we have a pole. I have a pole at the house. And sometimes I'll get up and I'm like, I'm bored. And I will go down there and just swing on the pole and work and, and, and exercise. So anyway, I made a choice and a decision because my mental was off whack. My emotional was off whack. My physical was starting to be off whack. So I made a decision to get my shit together. Excuse me. To get my stuff together all the way around. So counseling. Um, working out, taking trips, um, focusing on my finances, making sure things were in order and place, saving, having a true and real savings. And I know that's not feasible for everybody. Um, we're, we're, we're at a hard time right now and it's not feasible or whatever, but every little bit helps. Make a decision, make a budget and decide how you're going to put things aside and prepare for the future. Because whether you're ready for it or not, the future is coming. So have yourself physically healthy. My Sean said all that. Yep, all of that. So all right, y'all. So we wrapping up. Five minutes to ending. Like we started at 6.30 and I like to try to keep it because I'm not very punctual. Like I'm the one that's going to be late all the time. As y'all can see, sometimes I get on here a little bit late. But um, I'm working on that. But so healthy, 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 healthy. So this whole thing tonight was talking about the importance of you being healthy, your sexual health, because it comes down to it. When relationships tend to end, they, they, they end because there was a lack of understanding. There was a lack of the right energy given in the right place. There was selfishness. And when you don't take care of yourself, and when you don't take care of your mate sexually, it's selfish. It is selfish that your man, and I'm not going into the ins and outs, so why you don't want to suck, why you don't want to have oral sex, ladies? That That's another thing for y'all to deal with and talk about and get on and communicate about. But, if you don't want to give your man oral sex, it can be selfishness. If you don't want to give your lady oral sex, it can be selfishness. But if you're not together and ready and right, if you can't even really deal with yourself, why do you expect somebody else to deal with you? So be fair. Like, don't be selfish. Know that I am here. Like, you know, I have a problem with people um, having a problem with the word freedom and the word asking and discussing. And, and, you know, asking is discussing with your significant other. It's communication. So I don't have to ask my lady, can I go out? Why, Ninja? Why would you not ask her if you can go out? with the fellas because priority one is home it should be and asking her is not you getting permission is you saying i respect you enough to say hey let me see what my lady has because maybe she has something planned and if she doesn't have anything planned then fellas i see y'all at eight o'clock but you having that discussion with her same thing vice versa Ladies get into this thing that, oh, he ain't going to tell me. I'm the girl, please. If you living in a house with him, why can't he tell you? He should be able to tell you respectfully, both ways, and communicate. Babe, I don't want you going. I don't want you down. Dip, dip. Babe, do you mind if I, you know, girls want to go out or do you, you got a problem? You mind? Oh, have that discussion. It's being healthy. It's bringing health to your relationship, y'all. This is about health, healthy relationships. This is about health. Be healthy. Focus on yourself so you can give the best of yourself to somebody else if that's what you want to do. All right, y'all. Football practices.
almost over. I knew they wasn't going to end on time. Because this joker determined they're going to win every game, all six of them, before the season's end. season ends. We'll see what happens. But I love y'all. This was fun for me. Like, I hope y'all go... Well, I know y'all going to go back and watch it. I'm going to check the... Um, I'm going to check it um, every once in a while to see um, how many people have viewed it. How many people have viewed. And I appreciate all of your input. I appreciate all of you guys' input um, and all your all the things you know you can share to help someone else. Help someone else. There's someone out there struggling. Their relationship is struggling because they don't know um, either how to communicate it. They don't know how to deal with it, and they just need help. So give somebody um, some advice, and prayerfully, it will save a relationship. It will save a mental breakdown. It will save an emotional heartbreak. Because all of those things tie into your physical health. And it'll jack you up if you don't get it right. I love y'all. Y'all have a great weekend. Um, enjoy yourself. Be safe. Wear your condoms. Protect yourself. Make sure you know who you're dealing with. Make sure you know who you're getting involved with. All right. Love y'all. Thanks, Marshawn and Claudette. <laughs> yes, I love that, Jonathan. <laughs> Discusses. Okay. All right. All right, y'all. Let me get off. Love y'all. Later.